close your eyes, and take several slow, deep breaths as you bring your attention to Jesus inside of you. As distractions come to mind, acknowledge each distraction. As you acknowledge it, you might say, I trust you with this, Jesus. Pause now to notice and acknowledge each distraction and rejoin when you're ready. After acknowledging each distraction, take this moment to finish the statement, I am. Notice how you are right now. Sleepy, sad, weary, relaxed. Pause now as you take this moment to journal or say aloud each thing that comes to your mind about how you are. Now raise your hands toward the heavens. Jesus, we offer all that we are to you. We trust your embrace to hold us and all that we are. And now we turn to our scripture. As I read, keep your eyes full of love on this Jesus that we read about. Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all they had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The the servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. As I read this, one of the things that stands out to me is the radical difference between how much the first servant owed the king and how much the second servant owed the first servant. I think that when we look at the harms done to me, when I look at the harms done to me in life, the things he is calling me to forgive I forget how much of a greater debt I have to him than the debt I am forgiving to others. As I understand it, the amount the second servant owed the first servant was as little as one millionth of the debt that the first servant owed the king. In fact, my commentary said that what the first servant owed the king may have been as much as 100 million days wages for a peasant. This was an amount that he could not repay. And so is our relationship with Jesus and what he has forgiven us. Look at Psalm 18, verses 6 and 13 through 19. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to before him into his ears. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. 
He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy with great bolts of lightning. He routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of the breath from your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. This is the anger that God is pouring out as he comes to rescue me. I could not have done this for myself. The price was too high. It was literally impossible for me to pay. But when Jesus stood up for me, he took the wrath of God that I deserve because of my sin so that I don't have to. All of that wrath that God poured out, Jesus took when he shouldered my sins, forgave my debt, and took the wrath that I deserved upon himself. When I think that he has rescued me from my powerful enemy, Satan, who was too strong for me, my heart is melted in gratitude. And when Jesus called out to the Lord in distress on the night of his crucifixion, the Lord God did not thunder from heaven for him with a resounding voice. He did not shoot his arrows to scatter the enemy. He did not expose the foundations of the earth with a rebuking blast of breath from his nostrils. He did not reach down from on high to take hold of Jesus and rescue him from the powerful enemy in his day of disaster. He turned his back and let Jesus die alone so that I don't have to. And this was not God abusing Jesus. This was what Jesus chose to do for me when he wrestled with himself the night before his death and finally told God, not my will be done, but yours. Pause now and let your heart sit in full gratitude for the price he paid for your debt and rejoin when you're ready. When I turn to forgive others, I see that however awful their offense has been, their debt is small in comparison to the eternal debt that Jesus took for me, the debt I could have never paid. And as I respond to his forgiveness, I pray that my heart will be soft wax to receive the imprint of the features of Christ. May I set up no limitations, however unconsciously, for your pervasive and recasting light, Christ. Fill me with an unquenchable thirst for regeneration in all things. May I experience the bliss of flying into your arms for you to transform me by your light beyond any measure I myself might intend. I praise you, Jesus.